Good day humans, Chris Stead here. Uh, last night I was at the launch of Hubble, which is the new uh, Foxtel initiative, which is looking to group all of the apps under the sun across the world into one central hub area, Hubble Hub. Uh, here is the briefing uh, that was set up on the foreshore of the harbour here. Now in a second I'm going to take you through all the specs that they're supplied. I'm also going to give you my impressions having been able to pick up the device and, and hold it in my hands and look at the Hubble glass as well. So there's the Hubble box which is like a similar to an Amazon Fire Stick, similar, similar to a Apple TV box and that just kind of plugs in via uh, HDMI. And then you've also got this TV there built which is an all-in-one TV called Hubble Glass, uh, which has a soundbar built in and is basically like the IQ box and reimagined with a screen and sound. Uh, so here you can see kind of the setup. Now there it is itself. So uh, look, it's about the size of an Apple TV box, maybe a bit slimmer. Uh, I like the fact that the remote's nice and big, not like the Apple remote, which just falls in every single crack imaginable. You can see there it's got KO Binge and Netflix, so there's straight jumps. And that's the Hubble Glass right there. So it comes in 55 inch and 65 inch, it's 15.95 for the 55 and 19.95 I think for the uh, 65 inch TVs. Now as we get a little bit closer here, I, I will show you what I mean by the speaker system. I didn't go riding on it which is really annoying at the time, I didn't realise what was going on. But if you can see, just down the bottom there along the bar, that's the uh, speaker. So the soundbar is literally built into the screen. And then there's like, it looked like there was uh, speakers on top of the screen as well and little, on, little ones on the side corners as well. So this provides front, uh, kind of forward facing sound, upward uh, sound and there's also a subwoofer, it's a 3.1.2 system in there. And if you also look here, you can see the result is that the screen is quite fat by modern standards. Uh, it's really got a very boxy feel to it, very different from most TVs, and I suspect this is because the soundbar is built in, and that is why it is so uh, fat. Now it can be wall mounted, or it can be set on a stand like you can see here. I'm just trying to get behind so I can show the ports. Now I'll go through the specs again in a second, like I said, but that's a quick look at the kind of back of the box there. So a couple of, uh, three HDMI's in total, one of them is EARC as well, uh, they're 2.1's, uh, Ethernet, USB, uh, only 15 watts. Uh, but again, I'll go through the specs in a sec. So that's what you can expect from the back of the glass box. Now, obviously, I was just looking at these. They're all set up. They were working, and they were showing actual content earlier, and it did look, you know, it looked nice, 4K display. Uh, but I'll have to get a device in for further testing. Now you can see here the uh, Hubble box again, and that gives you an idea of how big it is compared to my hand. And nice big remote. I don't like the little small remotes that are very, the, the Apple remote sucks. Um, and you'll see on the back here, I'll show in a second, a look at the ports you've got on the back there. So Ethernet, HDMI, what looks to be uh, old school aerial. Uh, and that I think is interesting because I think this talks a lot to uh, I'll talk about in a sec about how I think this might be a bit of an upscale for the boomers which are still stuck on IQ and haven't really worked out how to ditch the box and kind of move into the digital era. But anyway, uh, let's have a look at the, uh, the tech specs as they were supplied on the day to media such as myself. Right, so here we are looking at the Hubble Glass tech specs that were sent through with the press release for me to share with you guys. Uh, this is for the Hubble Glass specifically, not for the Hubble Box. Uh, you can see here the two models, 55 and 65 inch 4K screen resolutions of 55 and 65, so that's your 4K resolution right there. Uh, Billion colors, this refresh rate uh, is quite disappointing, 60 hertz. Uh, you'd like at least 120 nowadays, especially if you're gonna run HDMI 2.1, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, most of it's look it's pretty standard stuff really it's not uh, a crazy hot screen uh, in terms of specs but it's definitely also not like massively outdated uh, Dolby Vision HDR10 I guess where it gets a little bit more iffy oh, I've got the speakers here actually so let's talk through those so 3.1.2 system with the central subwoofer to up firing uh, Dolby Atmos support uh, the EARC 
is, is worth noting. This allows you to do pass through. For example, uh, if you wanted to get a bit funky with co uh, video game consoles or run off a completely different sound bar, uh, do things like that, this will ena enable you to do that. Decent enough sound system really for an inbuilt uh, sound bar, but I haven't tested it yet, so I can't tell you exactly how good it sounds. And there you've got the rest of the uh, kind of software options there, but a lot of this stuff, it's interesting that web browser is not supported, uh, but a lot of this stuff, you know, it kind of is waiting on me to get hands on with it more. Look, hardware size, uh, it's not exactly blowing the world away. And so look at the next page. Now, a bit disappointed by this, just Wi-Fi 6. I don't know why you wouldn't do 6E in this day and age. And uh, you'll notice here that it's there are the, three, the, the HDMI ports are 2.1. Uh, so that's going to be more theoretically good enough to run a console at 120 Hz, but then screen's only 60 Hz anyway, so I was referring to earlier. Uh, the USB port, just 15 watts output. Um, not that I'm not sure why you'd be charging your, your phone through that, but 15 watt. Output is pretty low. It's not going to give you too much um, charge there. Uh, again, a bit weird for this day and age. Uh, you can wall mount it, which is cool. Uh, I, the, the version I saw was sitting on a very compact uh, stand, but you, you can wall mount it. And no USB playback, which is really interesting. Uh, so you can't just stick in a USB dongle with some movies that you've got uh, on, on MP4 for whatever reason, be those home videos or otherwise uh, acquired. So anyway, that's a run through of the specs that were provided to us, the media. So what I've got here is just a image that was provided by uh, Hubble or Foxtel uh, to media, just kind of showing the interface. Now they did do a live demo of it in action and <sighs> At this point, having not gone hands-on with the device myself, I'm struggling to kind of work out how this differentiates itself from what we've already got on Amazon Fire Stick, what we've already got on Apple TV, and what we've already got on the OS for the Samsung and LG in these TVs. So I'm struggling to really work out where the benefits is. I'm, I'm trying to work out how profiles are gonna work on this when you kind of got all these apps displaying. It's cool that you can see what's trending, do continue watching across multiple apps from one place. This, I can see, has very fun use case. What I can't quite understand at this point is, uh, yeah, what's going to happen if you've got three or four profiles on Netflix and then three and then three or four profiles set up on Hubble? How's that going to all in, connect and work? So, but otherwise, like other than just being the kind of interface that we're used to experiencing in 2024, I'm not really seeing too much here that stands out. Other than the fact that yes, it's just going to make definitely going to make life a bit easier if you've got multiple streaming services that you're trying to keep on top of at any one time to see what's on. In particular in the way that they showed how live TV shows can be brought into this experience from your free to air channels and your sport channels like KO. So that's been able to just, like, just see this is what's live right now on 9, on 7. Uh, and they had well, all these celebrities around um, from the various kind of channels kind of like pimping it. So it wasn't just Foxtel, they had, you know, Richard Wilkins and uh, the news reporter from Nine, sorry, I forgot her name, and 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 so forth around as well, also spruiking this. So some of the benefits that Hubble were touting on the night were that you could stack up up to five apps and then get a discount on them. And those apps are basically Binge, Ko, Flash, you know, like the actual owned owned apps of the company, and I think Netflix, and it must have been, I guess, Foxtel, but the. The, the, the word Foxtel wasn't mentioned once on a whole entire night anywhere. Uh, and I found this interesting because I think this is actually kind of, the device this is mostly gonna to speak to are people who are old school kind of boomers still using an IQ box and not comfortable with kind of upgrading to the idea of just using apps. And then they, if they saw this basically as an IQ box, that's a TV and a sound system in one, then they might be able to, I guess, move some of those customers off these older plans. Now I did take this image from the briefing itself, which was one of the last slides that they showed uh, with I think Patrick Delaney was talking through this, the CEO, and he was 
pointing to where he sees Hubble going in the future. So he wants to bring video streaming in, he wants to bring music streaming in. Uh, there was an example of a, a YouTuber, I can't remember who they were, but they were um, basically describing how Hubble was going to be this great way of integrating his YouTube channel into the watching habits of people as they're also watching Disney Plus and Netflix and so forth. So that was interesting. Uh, but the one that's really stood out for me obviously here is, is cloud gaming. And uh, we've already seen Netflix doing cloud gaming. I don't know if it's referring to that. I did ask around at the event and tried to get some insight into what they meant by that. And I was strictly told, hey, we're not talking about that now. We're talking about that later. So I don't know if this is a sign that uh, Hubble itself is going to start jumping on board and starting to, you know, get some, I, I can't see them making their own games specifically, but I can see them potentially uh, bringing on indies and so forth. But I'd say the most likely scenario with that cloud gaming is going to be Game Pass and xCloud and being able to play your video games without a console through the cloud and through Hubble. Uh, so that's, look, it's interesting. Again, though, it's far from unique. You can do that now on TVs. Through, this, through, through their OS, but uh, interesting all the same. So there you go, there's a quick summary of my first impressions having held Hubble in my hand and looked at it and been at the briefing last night. I'm hoping to get a review unit in next week so I can give you some actual uh, final review thoughts. There's Amish and Andy uh, kind of signing off the event. And uh, yeah, until next time, thanks very much for watching. I'm Chris Stead, check you later. You.